الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم I am Dr. Ahmed Noman and today in this lecture we will discuss about chemical properties of advanced materials and among chemical properties in this lecture specifically we will discuss about the corrosion resistant properties of advanced materials so this uh, topic is a bit lengthy so it's not possible to finish this in one lecture so we will have two lectures on this topic and this is the part one and today uh, in this lecture we will first briefly uh, see what are the chemical properties and among chemical properties then we will discuss about the corrosion uh, what is corrosion how it happens and what are the disadvantages of corrosion and how can we prevent uh, materials from being corroded and then we will discuss about the use of advanced materials uh, for the prevention or inhibition of corrosion so let's uh, discuss with this uh, our first le uh, lecture <coughs> So before we uh, start our today's lecture, uh, uh, you know that it is about the chemical or corrosion resistant properties of the advanced material. So uh, when we uh, studied about the magnetic properties of advanced material, so there we have already discussed in detail that what are the advanced material or what uh, do we mean by this term of advanced material. So I think we don't have to. Uh, discuss that what are the advanced materials again so in uh, today's uh, uh, lecture we are going to uh, discuss about the chemical properties of advanced materials so what are the chemical properties how uh, do we define the chemical properties so how a material interacts with another material is uh, known as a chemical behavior of that particular substance so <clears throat> we can say that it is a response of a material or of a uh, substance to another material or we can say it is a lack of response uh, what do we mean is that when we talk about the reactivity of a material so we can say that either it is reactive or non-reactive so how it reacts it mean it is kind of response that if we have a substance and it reacts with an another substance and how both of them react together is a reactivity or the response of one material to another and lack of response means the like there are some materials which are inert and they don't respond to other materials or they don't interact with other materials so all of these things come under the category of chemical behavior or chemical properties of materials so uh, let's uh, briefly overview uh, some of the chemical properties and then we can uh, go further and discuss uh, uh, with our lecture of corrosion resistant properties so there can be different uh, kind of reactions for example uh, when we talk about uh, reaction we have the flammability so what is uh, flammability we know that flammability is a ability of a substance to get burned or uh, it's resistant to burning so flammability means ke how uh, quickly a substance is burned so <clears throat> it is a very important property then specifically when we uh, have to store different materials for example the solvents and then we have to take care that we the substances which can easily get uh, catch flame so we have to separate those to avoid fires and the flammability is a chemical reaction then we have different other uh, chemical reactions for example how a substance react with water for example uh, we have sodium so whenever we put sodium uh, metal in water it catches fire so another thing is how a specific substance react with an acid whether it get dissolves in acid or it makes some other substances or it uh, doesn't react with acid so 
these are all uh, type of chemical properties similarly we have uh, like uh, toxicity is a kind of chemical property that uh, it is uh, the measurement of ability of a substance that how uh, it damages some animals like some other animals or plants so how toxic a substance is uh, to a specific species so that is basically dependent on its chemical properties or its reactivity with uh, those living beings and uh, then for example we have heat of combustion uh, that how much uh, heat is uh, uh, released when a uh, uh, substance is burned or chemical stable uh, stability how stable is a specific substance and then uh, for example we have oxidation that uh, how uh, a metal or a substance is oxidized uh, like it uh, and uh, when we talk uh, get an example of uh, oxidation from our uh, daily life so we uh, know that then if we cut an apple and put it uh, outside so after some time it's uh, get uh, brownish in color so that is actually due to the oxidation process this, this is the same oxidation process which actually causes the corrosion or the uh, rust in the steel or uh, iron so it is a, a type of chemical property or uh, chemical reaction the corrosion resistance and in this lecture actually we will discuss about the corrosion uh, what is corrosion and then corrosion resistant properties of advanced materials so the word corrosion actually stands for metal or uh, material deterioration or surface damage in an aggressive environment <coughs> corrosion itself is an electro chemical oxidation process or uh, we can call it it is a redox process in which uh, both oxidation and reduction occurs in uh, corrosion process normally hota hai ki jo metal hota hai hamare paas ye uh, normally transfers electrons to the environment normally jo electrolyte hai water hai aur oxygen hai and it is oxidized it as it uh, gives electrons and those uh, electrons are actually accepted by the analyte and mostly if it's oxygen in the environment so it takes those electron and is reduced and it makes oxides uh, mostly with the metal so <coughs> these uh, metal oxide for example in the case of iron jo hai uh they form actually the rust on the surface aur hum kehte hain ki jo metal jo hai wo corrode ho gaya there is corrosion happening over the surface so basically it is an oxidation reduction process in which uh, metal surface is oxidized uh, by reaction with the uh, environment mostly water and oxygen Imagine four objects, an aluminium toy, an iron nail, a copper pipe, and a gold ring are left out in the open for many years. Which of the four materials do you think will be in the best condition when they are rediscovered? Pause, think, and continue when ready. If you think the gold ring is likely to be in the best condition, you're right. The copper pipe and the iron nail will appear in a worse condition, but the aluminium toy is also preserved very well. Most likely the iron now will appear in the worst condition. This is because of corrosion. Corrosion is described as formation of compounds on the surface of a metal when it is exposed to air and or water or an electrolyte like salt water. Typically, once a metal corrodes, it forms compounds known as oxides or hydrated oxides. The now made of iron rusted This by the way is the only time you should use the term rusting. All other metals are considered as having been corroded when they react with water and or oxygen in the air. But why would the nail be more corroded than the aluminium toy, the copper pipe or the gold ring? Have you any ideas? Pause the video and continue when ready. 
The reason is, the metals all have different reactivities. Iron corrodes faster because it is more reactive than the copper and the gold. But you may be wondering, well, why didn't the aluminium toy corrode the fastest? The truth is, the aluminium is more reactive than the iron, so it reacts fastest with the oxygen from the air, forming aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is very unreactive because once the oxide layer is formed on the surface, it binds very tightly to the surface of the metal, so no cracks can form and cause further corrosion. Here's a challenge. How might you use this idea to protect the iron now? The answer is that by covering a metal like iron with another more reactive metal, like zinc, is that the zinc forms the zinc oxide layer quickly. The iron underneath is protected. This process is called galvanizing and can last up to 100 years. If you think on the metal on a bike, corrosion can be prevented by painting the frame, a static part, or greasing the metal parts like the chain which moves, or by covering it with a thin layer of a less reactive metal like tin, copper or gold, but that would be very expensive. So in some cases, ये भी होता है कि जो metal होते हैं, they they react with the oxygen which is present in the air and they form metal oxide on their surface. And we call this process as a natural passivity or natural resistance to corrosion, as those layers are resistant to the corrosion. So the formation of that thin layer actually uh, blocks the environment to react with the underlying the metal surface and because it cannot undergo further reaction so there is no more corrosion or no more reaction with the environment. So an example which we also see in the uh, animation is that uh, oxidation of aluminium mostly results in the formation of aluminium oxide. Ke jo ke, uh, resistant hoti hai kaafi and that it doesn't react so that thin layer of aluminum oxide is actually formed on the surface of the metal and it actually protects it protects it from further contact and reaction with the reaction with oxygen so due to the formation of that layer of aluminum oxide on the surface jo niche wali surface hoti hai that doesn't react and mostly جو ہے یہ کروڈ نہیں ہوتی it is it remains safe from the corrosion but in some cases ایسا بھی ہوتا ہے کہ جو protection film ہے جو ہے کئی دفعہ damage ہو جاتی due to certain اگر اس کے اوپر کوئی stress پڑا ہے یا کوئی بہت ہی harsh جو ہے وہ environment ہے in that case that actually film جو ہے that can be damaged or destroyed and we call it that it is re-passivated the material جو ہے کہ وہ re-passivate ہو گیا So, uh, if we want to prevent corrosion, we have to understand that ये कैसे होती है. Because एक दफा अगर एक metal जो है वो corrode हो जाता है, एक दफा rusting हो जाती है, then जो है उसको ठीक करना जो है वो मुश्किल है. When once it is corroded, so then we have to replace it. So the only way is to the app corrosion होने ही ना दे. You have to prevent it earlier. So there is one important thing. To know that corrosion uh, uh, always happens in the uh, presence of oxygen and water, so it requires both oxygen and humidity to uh, happen. So if we, हम इसको कोशिश करें कि इसके अगर जो हमारे पास metal surface है, it is not exposed to uh, oxygen and water, so in that way we can prevent the corrosion to happen. Another point is that it is a uh, the uh, the formation of rust or the corrosion is not the direct re reaction of iron or a metal surface and its oxygen but it's instead it is a electrochemical process it is a re redox process in which uh, oxidation of metal occurs and also there is a reduction of the oxygen which forms the metal oxides on the surface but they are not directly reacting uh, actually the oxygen and the uh, and, and metal experiment Place an iron nail in four test tubes. Fill one with regular tap water until the nail is submerged. Fill another with regular tap water and add half a spoonful of sodium chloride, 
regular table salt. Shake from side to side to ensure that sodium chloride fully dissolves. Fill the third test tube with recently boiled water and add a thin layer of oil. When we boil the water, we remove any dissolved oxygen and the layer of oil prevents any oxygen from further dissolving. In the last test tube, add a spoonful of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride removes moisture or water. So in the first test tube, the nail is exposed to oxygen and moisture. In the second test tube, the nail is exposed to oxygen, moisture, and salt. So in the third test tube, the nail is only exposed to water. In the fourth test tube, the nail is exposed only to oxygen. Stopper all four test tubes with a rubber bung and let stand for a couple of days. You will find that the nails in the first and second test tubes have rusted. In particular, the nail in the second test tube has rusted more than the nail in the first test tube, and the rust has likely flaked off. You may see a reddish-brown precipitate at the bottom of these tubes. The nails in the third and fourth test tubes have not rusted. So what has happened here? The iron has undergone an oxidation reaction, forming hydrated iron trioxide or rust. Salt and acid act as a catalyst for this reaction, which is why the nail in the second test tube formed more rust than the nail in the first test tube. So from the animation, we have learned that it requires uh, water and air to for the corrosion to happen and also we learned that if there is salt present the presence of salt actually acts as a catalyst and it enhances the corrosion process so that actually explains that those areas which are hilly areas where mostly buff and the buff to the road mostly salt is used mostly salt is used in different so that ex, uh, wo areas hote hain mostly wahan pe jo automobiles hoti hain wahan pe rusting zyada hoti hai and that actually explain ke wahan pe rusting kyun zyada hoti hai because that salt actually ek, uh, jo hai wo dissolve ho jata hai water ke andar and which actually enhance the process of corrosion over there and another thing which we under, uh, we learned in the animation was the uh, redox process which is uh, occurring during the corrosion so let's uh, uh, watch another animation which is uh, describing in detail how that uh, redox process uh, is occurring the oxidation of uh, metal or and the re reduction of the oxygen is happening so let's uh, watch another animation the rusting of iron is an oxidation reduction reaction here we can see the iron being exposed to a water droplet containing dissolved oxygen. This exposure causes each iron atom underneath the water droplet to give up two electrons to become iron 2 ions. This process is known as oxidation. Next, electrons are released and flow throughout the droplet where the oxygen dissolved in water receives electrons to form a hydroxide ion. This is the reduction process. Next, iron 2 ions combine with hydroxide ions to form iron 2 hydroxide. Finally, iron 2 hydroxide reacts with water and oxygen to form iron 3 hydroxide, which is also known as rust. So, how we, we can protect the metal surface and uh, prevent the corrosion? So it can be carried out in, a, in many ways and there are different uh, methods to prevent or control the corrosion process so uh, main requirement for preventing corrosion is that we uh, protect the surface of a metal or iron or whatever the metal is so, uh, so that it cannot interact with the oxygen and the moisture from the atmosphere so we have to shield the surface of the metal so uh, the main requirement uh, have, uh, to prevent the metal from corrosion is that we have metal ki surface hai, usko, uh, protect the surface of the surface of the surface of the oxygen 
इनके साथ जो है वो इंटरेक्ट ना कर सके सो वी हैव टू शील्ड द सर्फेस फ्राम दीज टू सो दैट देर इज़ नो क्रोजन प्रोसेस एंड वन मैथड इज़ कि हम जो है वो मेटल सर्फेस को है वो जो है पेंट कर दें सो इट इज़ आल्सो अफेक्टिव अगेंस्ट द क्रोजन बट हैपन इज के इफ देर इज सम रेली हार्श वेदर ऐसा जो है धूप है बहुत तेज़ गर्मी है और जिसमें यू वी लाइट बहुत ज़्यादा है सो दैट कैन एक्चुअली डैमेज द मोस्टली पेंट सर्फेस एंड आल्सो इफ देर आर एक्सेसिव रेन्स और देर आर सम काइंड ऑफ स्क्रैच सो वट हैपन्स इज के जो पेंट है वो जो है वो उखड़ जाता है एंड आल्सो देर इज इफ देर इज एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी कोल्ड एंड इन स्पेशली इन दोज एरिया वेर देर इज स्नो सो एन विंटर वो जो है चिप्स जो है बन के उतरना शुरू हो जाती हैं कि जो पेंट की जो सरफेस है वो डैमेज हो जाती है सो द थिंग इज कि पेंट इज अफेक्टिव अगेंस्ट द क्रोजन बट इन केसेज इफ देर इज सम स्क्रैच ऑन द सरफेस और अगर इन्वायरमेंट की वजह से सरफेस ऑफ पेंट इज डैमेज तो दोबारा क्रोजन जो है वो स्टार्ट हो जाती है सो इन दैट केस वी हैव टू री पेंट द सर्फेस Another method is के uh, which is used के sometime uh, electric current is uh, used to produce some the passive films or uh, produce the uh, some metal oxide films on the surface. So for that purpose, it is provided with current which results in the formation of oxide layers on the surface, which prevent the metal uh, uh, to react with the environment. So that is also helpful in prevention of corrosion. and in some cases uh, uh, kuch metal surface hoti hain they are treated with the lasers actually so they make them non crystalline on the surface and there are some materials if they uh, they are in the non crystalline form so they are resistant to corrosion so that can also be a method uh, to prevent corrosion and in नदर मैथड इज़ के हम जो है वो इलेक्ट्रो प्लेटिंग कर दें किसी मेटल के साथ के जो इनर्ट है फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन इलेक्ट्रोप्लेट अ सर्फिस विद गोल्ड और प्लाटिनम विच आर वेरी इनर्ट सो ऐसा होता है कि जो भी हमारे पास इनर्ट हैं जो मेटल्स हैं जो रेक्ट नहीं करते हैं जिनको क्रोजन नहीं होती फॉर एग्जाम्पल गोल्ड है या जैसे प्लाटिनम है सो उनकी जो है इलेक्ट्रो प्लेटिंग की जाती है कोटिंग कर दी जाती है मेटल की सर्फेस पे सो दैट दे Uh, they are resistant to corrosion similarly uh, there are some other metals jaise uh, magnesium hai chromium hai titanium hai and zinc hai so they also form the protect protective oxide coating so they, uh, we can also coat the material with these metal oxide and it will uh, help in you know the prevention of the corrosion बट इन केस ऑफ आयरन डिपेंड करता है कि जब हम मेटल uh, ऑक्साइड जो है अगर उसकी कोटिंग करना चाह रहे हैं uh, किसी भी मेटल की सरफेस पे उसको अवॉइड करें ताकि वो क्रोजन हो सके सो दैट एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स के वट काइंड ऑफ मेटल वी आर यूजिंग दे आर सम मेटल्स हुज ऑक्साइड्स आर इनर्ड बट देर आर सम मेटल्स हुज ऑक्साइड्स एक्चुअली कैन रिएक्ट सो देर इज नो यूज ऑफ कोटिंग विद दोज ऑक्साइड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन केस ऑफ आयरन जो आयरन ऑक्साइड है इट इज एक्चुअली इट्स बिकम्स पोरस सो इवन इफ देर इज ऑक्साइड लेयर ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द आयरन मेटल बट स्टिल देर विल बी ऑक्सीडेशन बिकॉज इट कैन नॉट प्रिवेंट द अंडरलाइंग सर्फेस ऑफ द आयरन टू कंटेक्ट विद द इन्वायरमेंट द स्टील जो है मोस्टली जो यूज की जाती है आटोमोबील्स में तो उसको जो है वो क्रोजन से कि वो प्रिवेंट करने के लिए वट हैपन्स कि उसको जो है वो जिंक के अंदर डिप किया जाता है मोल्टन जिंक यूज़ की जाती है और उसके ऊपर कोटिंग कर दी जाती है जिंक की ऑन दी सर्फेस ऑफ द स्टील ताकि जो है उसकी क्रोजन हो जाए जिसको प्रोसेस को गलवनाइजिंग भी कहा जाता है इसके अलावा नॉट ओनली जिंक देर आर अदर नॉन मेटालिक कोटिंग एज वेल फॉर एग्जाम्पल डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्लास्टिक्स हैं पेंट्स हैं ऑयल्स हैं जिनकी जो है वो कोटिंग की जा सकती है टू प्रिवेंट द क्रोजन ऑफ द मेटल सर्फेस Prevented if we paint the areas exposed to oxygen and moisture. This is done on many bicycles and cars. Another method to prevent rust is by placing a layer of oil or grease. This is done on many bicycle chains. 
It helps lubricate the moving parts, which reduces friction and slows down the rusting process. Another way to prevent rusting is a sacrificial protection method called galvanizing. Have a look at this reactivity table. Zinc is more reactive than iron. When exposed to oxygen and moisture, zinc will corrode faster than iron. So if we put them together, zinc protects iron but is sacrificing itself, hence the term sacrificial protection. This method is applied to prevent rusting on ships. The oxidation of zinc can be described using this following equation. So besides preventing rusting, there is another advantage to this galvanizing process. The formed zinc oxide layer can be removed, and the freshly exposed zinc can corrode once again, thereby further protecting the iron or steel hull. So as we have uh, learned from the previous uh, animation, that there can be uh, different ways uh, for protecting or uh, inhibiting the corrosion on different materials. So for example, painting with uh, paint can be used to protect the surface from uh, its interaction with the environment and that can inhibit corrosion. Then uh, like for greasing or uh, lubrication of the moving parts and then the gal galvanizing process. So there are uh, different uh, ways. So now, uh, normally, uh, uh, these days, the most common method is uh, uh, protecting the metal surface with some kind of thin layers or thin layer, uh, thin film coatings. So uh, this is the most commonly used method nowadays to protect the metal surface from uh, corrosion. And the advantages of using uh, thin film coatings are that we uh, can uh, use different materials for uh, the thin film. For example, we can use uh, nanomaterials uh, for the coating which can, uh, uh, which actually make very thin layer and uh, because of the small particle size, they have very high surface area and uh, their efficiency is very high. Similarly, we can uh, coat with some uh, inorganic materials, we can coat with organic materials, or we can use some hybrid materials. We can uh, even use plastics, PVC materials for the coating. So the most commonly uh, used method is uh, uh, coating the surface of a metal with some uh, protecting material depending on uh, the application of uh, where we are going to use that material so the uh, type of uh, coating may differ in on the different materials however uh, uh, there are some other uh, application for example we have aircrafts uh, we have ships and there are other application where we uh, have very high temperature so if we have a, a, a application where we are using some material which, uh, which involves very high temperature so the most of the coating uh, may get uh, destroyed and may, uh, they may not work at those high temperatures or uh, the pressures or um, what we have in the air aircraft when they are at the high altitude. So for uh, different uh, specific applications uh, there can be some other ways. Uh, for example, for aircrafts, uh, we don't only need uh, corrosion resistance, but we need a uh, very high strength of that material. So uh, that specific kind of uh, steels are developed or uh, being fabricated for that purpose, which are corrosion resistance and as well as they have very high resistance or uh, from the breakage or the <coughs> they have very high strength. Similarly, we uh, know that ships, uh, because they have, uh, they're constantly interact uh, in with the water and they are more prone to the uh, corrosion and they also they have to be a very high pressure from water. So for that, we have to make some specific kind of material. Similarly, for high temperature resistant, we need to uh, develop materials which uh, actually uh, work at very high temperature and so depending on the application so there are uh, different uh, ways for the inhibition of uh, corrosion 
so uh, these are the some common ways and we uh, will discuss these uh, all of these uh, possibilities in our next lecture that how we can use these different uh, methods for the uh, pro uh, inhibition or uh, protection from corrosion thank you that's all for today i re really hope you aapko isme se kuch na kuch zarur samajh aaya hoga and in case you have uh, trouble in understanding some terminologies or agar kisi cheez ki samajh nahi aaya aapko so you are really free to ask uh, any questions so please uh, listen this lecture carefully and let me know if you don't understand anything thank you allah hafiz